classic thing that sometimes you don't know everything. You know, I had to think about this quite hard, having that passion for what they are doing. Hey everyone, how's it going? So in case you haven't already watched a video all about how to get work experience without already having work experience, I received a question from one of our friends um, asking how to get work experience, but at the end of her question, she also asked, are there any qualities that biomedical scientists have? Now, I actually answered that part of the question in my original video, but then I realized that the video was getting a bit long. So I'm separating it into two parts. And in addition to kind of answering that question, I want to add a few more things to it because I've just remembered a few more things. Now, I will link the placement video below because you might find some useful nuggets in there. But as I said, our friend was asking what qualities biomedical scientists have or that they should work to try and develop before they start their career. All right, so let's get into that. And finally, to answer the last part of your question, which was any advice on how to be selected, blah, 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 and qualities that biomedical scientists must have. You know, I had to think about this quite hard because I work with a bunch of scientists and we are all very different. Everybody is different not only in terms of skill and knowledge, but also in their personality and how they tackle a problem and come up with solutions. But I tried very hard to think about some commonalities just to answer your questions. And I have a few things written down. Oh, my battery's about to die, so I need to go replace that quickly. Hang on. Okay, we're back. So, as I was saying, one of the qualities that I've noticed amongst the junior members of staff, but also the professors and the people who are very high up. And that is accepting that sometimes you don't know everything and that it's okay to not know everything. Very often, whether you are a higher professor or a junior member of staff, you are typically trained in a very specific field. So often I hear in seminars and talks very senior people asking, oh well, actually I've never heard of that before, or um, I don't know what that is, can you explain it to me? And I think it's that eagerness to find out more and kind of accepting that it's okay not to know everything. It's a very, very good quality to have because it ensures that when you don't know something, then you will ask and you don't have to be shy about it. The next thing that I've noticed is that people tend to be very methodical and very meticulous when it comes to doing what they do. And it's kind of funny because there are certain things that in the everyday life, if you may, if somebody did that, you would think, well, that's really weird. Or like, why would they do that? Or do they have OCD? Like, why are they being so particular? But it's these little particularities that in a way help you with science because it helps you to, as I said, do things meticulously. In doing a lot of experiments, what you'll find is that a lot of reagents or cells or whatever tend to be quite specific and you really do have to practice precision. So just to give you a silly example, um, whenever I am labeling tubes or boxes or anything of the sort, I'm so meticulous in how I, for example, label them and how I arrange things and just little things like that, which my friends make fun of me for and they say, oh, you know, Tusa's got OCD. But no, there's a method to the madness because when I'm doing an experiment, I know where exactly everything is kept and that I can do all of these steps to ensure that I don't make mistakes. I really hope I don't sound like a crazy person because just as I'm saying this, I sound like a crazy person. But if you aren't that kind of a person, and you do th do things kind of haphazardly, don't worry too much, especially if you're young, because these are the skills that you'll develop. And they're definitely skills that I've developed, mostly through trial and error of being in the middle of an experiment and realizing that something is missing or something isn't the right volume and then freaking out and panicking. And next time I'm like, okay, everything's gonna be in order, everything's going to be checked, everything's going to be the right label. Anyway, I'm gonna stop. I am actually starting to sound crazy now. And I think last but not least, it is just having that passion for what they are doing. I think because a lot of science and because a lot of experimental um, research is quite repetitive and can be kind of dull and tedious at times, you really have to have passion and persistence to get yourself through. And that's definitely something that I have um, picked up on from being surrounded by lots of scientists. So yeah, thumbs up for passion and persistence. Now, as I said, I wanted to add one more thing to the end of this list, and that is all about being flexible. 
You see, when you go into research, especially academic research, you will soon realise that it's definitely not the kind of career where you check in at 9 o'clock and check out at 5. And something that I think is important for a lot of young scientists to know is that it's really, really important to learn to become more flexible, both in your time and also in your character and the way you do things. Let's say that you're in the middle of an experiment, you can't just think, ah, all right, it's five o'clock, I've got to pack it up and leave, because the experiment just won't get done. There are certain um, things that you might have to do that just generally take a longer time to do. And just to give you a personal example, because I go to clinics on certain days and during my clinic days I try to get blood samples and consent patients and all of that kind of stuff, there have been quite a few occasions where clinics have run on till about five o'clock and that means that at five o'clock my job only begins because I've spent all of the afternoon consenting patients and taking blood from them and then obviously the blood needs to be processed. So that's what I mean in terms of flexibility. There have also been other times where it'll be late in the afternoon on a Friday or something like that and I'll just get a call and I'll be like, well, a patient has had surgery and surgery is just finished at four o'clock, a tumour sample is coming to you, can you process it? And that is just an aspect of the job. Um, if you want certain things to be done, then you just have to be flexible and put in the time. Although I have to say one of the best parts about this job is that the flexibility works both ways. If I have ended up working kind of late the day before, then the next day I might say, well, you know what, I'll have a bit of a lion and I'll go in at half ten instead of going there at nine. So it works both ways. So yes, as I said, those are some of the more prominent um, qualities of biomedical scientists or researchers, if you'd like, that I've personally noticed and that I personally think are important. But there are so many different researchers and in this video I'm specifically talking about people in the lab because obviously somebody who is a bioinformatician or epidemiolog epidemiologist, <laughs> hard to say, um, and you're in those kind of, I guess, dry sciences, your schedules and the qualities that you will have for those kinds of science will be a little more different. So yes, something to bear in mind. Well, I hope that helps. So do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, my lovelies, and I really hope that this was beneficial. Make sure to subscribe if you aren't already and press that little bell icon so you get a notification every time I upload a video. Until next time, take care and I'll see you later.